Some people say, well, I'm afraid of public speaking, so I'm going to go to Toastmasters. You know, that's almost like I'll throw myself out there and I'll learn the techniques and I'll, I'll grit my teeth and I'll go through it. Or I'll go skydiving if I'm afraid of heights or, you know, those kind of things. If I'm afraid of uh, burning myself, I'll go walking on hot coals in India, you know, to get over that fear. It's not the way it really works. It's more like the Spirit wants to use you in a miraculous way to strengthen your identification with the right mind and your alignment with Source. And then there's where the transcendence of fear comes in. You don't transcend it on a horizontal plane. You have to transcend it vertically in your mind through your function. So the question, whenever the question comes up about doubt or fear, it's always transcendence through love, through being used by the Holy Spirit that brings about the, the release of the fear. Even though the personality self may think it's afraid of specific things and it needs to overcome a number of specific things, it's really the fear that's being held on to in the mind. The ego identification is what the fear is and the miracle dissolves that away. It's the same when people talk about a sense of interpersonal relationships and a fear around sexuality or a fear around physical intimacy and the spirit then translates that, no, you're really afraid of the light. You're really afraid of the intimacy of the connection with spirit, the connection with love and light. And then the ego projects it out as if there's an interpersonal conflict. And that's why people can go to therapy for years and years, decades, trying to work out, change the balance, change things in terms of the interpersonal, when really that's never been the problem. The problem has been a fear of knowing who you are, a fear of the of the Christ, of the light. So this this is where the metaphysics of the Course come in, but it also helps you in a practical way where you face what you're fearing and how you perceive it, and then you bring it in to the Holy Spirit and say, I need help. Please lift this from my mind. And we do that through function. So I think Guidance, mind training, and our, our, our purpose and our function are very deeply connected. Yeah, and that's very empowering because to follow the guidance is something everybody can do. Like everybody can do it. it doesn't, it's not dependent on external situations or external people or around. And I think for, for us, um, the training of it is 24-7. Um, and, you know, looks like we're setting up a retreat or setting up a room, operating tech equipment. We're making, doing all kinds of things, making a meal. At the level of form, there isn't anything special that, that we have to achieve. But it's in the, the desire and the purpose of using that and use that as a way of training the mind to ask specific guidance and listen and then dare to follow. Because sometimes the guidance does come because it comes from a different place. It does not match what you probably know from past experiences or what you think is most safe to protect certain kind of situations. So the guidance might come in and is very out of the box, is very different. And, but then in our daily experiences, we really have to use all kinds of activities and communication to really focus on that one thing, ask the Holy Spirit's guidance and receive and follow. Because in terms of specifics that David was just mentioning Jason receives a lot of specific guidance come through him to deliver out. We realize, you know, the mind does have a tremendous fear of receiving specific guidances, specific what to do, because that, you know, sometimes at the beginning, I realized it actually feels more easy, <clears throat> easy to say is all good is all 
you know, is my mind, I need to change my mind. Um, you know, that is seems a little easier. But when it comes down to what really matters, you know, when I still believe in certain situation, people really matter to me. And to be able to ask for guidance and follow that becomes a real struggle. And because of that, and the real fear of, of the love and the light that that's gonna open up when you follow the mind actually tell itself you can't hear specifics. There's a real worthiness there too, you know, trusting, you know, you can operate around time and space based on past experiences and what you think you know, but don't really trust. You actually can just rely on this intuition and inner listening. So I guess for us is it, it has been like 24, 24 seven nonstop practice of this, of this one thing, really just keep, keep asking and keep listening and keep following. And then there, there will be a lot of struggles or um, resistance that comes up. And then that's in our relationships, we actually started to join in those resistance and to look at it. So that's the hope of it because following guidance is something that is so powerful and so effective. And it is something we can all do. Not, no one has the power to stop us to do that.